Hello, hello everybody and welcome to a create video. I've been spending a few hours designing this thing and it's actually fully up and operational. So I figured I would talk about what this is and then probably point out what this, you know, like the purpose behind this and how it could be used in a survival situation. So this is a create quarry. Um, so if you don't know, one of the staples of create is how you can uh, automate pretty much anything. And what this machine does is that it automatically digs a hole in the ground. Now you guys might be saying, wait, Jeb, isn't it like super easy to do that? Like there's literally this thing called the drill, which I do use for this, in which if you provide it with some power, I'm going to provide this drill with some power. And as you can see, wow, it just broke a dirt block. And obviously if you were to like push that with a piston or whatever, then yeah, I could break that dirt block and so on. To which I reply, yes. I can use those to dig a hole in the ground, but that doesn't use the fortune enchantment. And you're like, hold up, <laughs> why, why would you want the fortune enchantment? Well, so I could get more ores. I don't think that should be like a hard thing to point out. So either way, with those drills, they do not apply the fortune enchantment as they dig down, which means that, you know, obviously you're not gonna get as many ore yields but it's a completely automatic process, so, you know, big deal. However, what this machine does is it picks up the blocks, and it filters out the ores, and then mines them with the fortune pickaxe. Now, you guys might be saying, wait a minute, if you could just automatically have a machine mine something with a fortune pickaxe, why don't you just, you know, use those instead of the drills, and then you'll have the same result. Well, you could, but then your pickaxe will wear down more quickly, and this way, all of the stone is being mined by these drills, and all of the ores are being mined by these pickaxes. Which, by the way, I do not expect people who end up trying to build this to have a supply of this many netherite pickaxes. I'm just doing this for testing purposes as a proof of concept. So what this machine does is that it filters out stone from the other ores, well, other blocks, and then it will allow the pickaxes to break the non-stone. So as you can see, this coal there, it's getting broken by these pickaxes while the stone is being mined by uh, these drills. This saves durability for the pickaxes, which means that they will last significantly longer. And if I were to attach this to some sort of system to move it over, this system would need, would be able to last a lot longer than a straight pickaxe quarry would. That's not to say that this is faster, I absolutely do not think that this is faster, but if you're wanting a system that you don't have to replace the stuff as often, it may, may end up saving you time, despite the fact that it is slower at the whole digging thing. It's not necessarily slow, like as you can see, it's breaking the stuff pretty quickly. It's just that, you know, it might be a little bit more work than the average person would want to put in. But honestly, I'm a YouTuber, I can afford to put in the extra work that nobody else wants to. So, there. So I probably should get to explaining what this machine does. So I'm going to let it run through the current set of things, and then I'm going to, uh, you know, explain it in a creative mode world. I'm just not wanting to break this because, oh, it's broken so many times while building this up. I may or may not have just explained this and then realized that my microphone was off. So I've got to explain it again. So let's start. Here is how we are going to be picking up the block. So we have a pulley system, which is going to lower itself down. I said it's going to lower itself down. Oh, that's in the way. So here we have a pulley system and this pulley is going to be attached to um, a few things here. The first of them is a sticker, and what a sticker does is that it will attach to the block in front of it after it receives a redstone pulse, and if it receives another one, it will no longer be sticking. And the sticker is attached to a redstone link, which is always receiving power. Now, you guys may think, oh, wait a minute, this will just make it so the sticker will not pick anything up, because if we uh, just take a look here, it's receiving power, and then I give it power again, it's not going to pick anything up or let go. But that actually is not the resulting effect, because when it is turned into an entity, which it is when it is being in movement, 
it is actually no longer connected. And so if we were to look down here, you, as you can see, these are sticking. And I'm going to now reverse the direction. As you can see, we have now grabbed those blocks. And these blocks are now going to be released again once it gets back up to the top because it turns back into block form. And now that we have these things out here, I'm going to be using the piston to push it forward. So then it is no longer in the way of the pulley. And then I'm going to reverse direction so that the pulley can go back down again. And then on this side of the thing, we are going to be having our output. Now for the machine that I have in the world, I have it move one block at a time. And there is a reason for this. That is because I'm filtering out the stone from the ores using a smart observer. Smart observers are observers that only activate when the thing matching their filter is placed in front of them. This means that I can have a filter for all non ores and then have it detect whenever there's one in front of them. Combining this with the use of a sequence gear shift, it means that we can have a drill mine when a stone or, well, a non ore is placed in front of it. And we can then have a deployer mine after the thing gets pushed through the rest of the way. That is how we filter out the stone from the not stone, resulting in us getting our ores with only a pickaxe preserving their durability, meaning that if we were to have it be mining across a larger area, we are going to be spending fewer resources. Now you guys may be wondering, uh, when I go back into the world, you guys will see that my, my piston will move one block and then one block more. Well, that's because the smart observer doesn't observe an entity and it can't determine that the block in the entity is a sandstone or a stone respectively. So in order for it to actually be mined, it has to be in a block form. So the sticky mechanical piston is actually just acting as a really fancy uh, piston extender. And then after all the stuff is mined, it is gathered up and then this is triggered again. So then it goes down, collects more blocks, it comes right on back up, and then right at that point, it then goes out once more. It's relatively simple in concept. In practice, it's really annoying. Oh yeah, by the way, it's called the Fortunator. If you know, you know. So I'm going to have the machine run through one loop so you guys can see that process that I mentioned um, across a larger area. Oh yeah, by the way, here is the redstone, perpetually powered redstone link over here. So as you can see, it's kind of a similar system as to what we had down there. So it's being lowered down, and then it is going to collect the blocks. And that's going to come all the way back up. It's just got a little bit of extra because I've got the sequence gear ship to push it down as if it's going 80 blocks. And now it will... Oh yeah, we've got this bottom part. I'll have to explain that. But the piston is going out one block at a time. It's detecting which parts are stone and which parts are not and the stone is being mined. And as you can see, the drops are actually being pushed off the drills into our conveyor line. It's being pushed off one at a time. And the ores, as you can see, are being mined by this line here. And now it is going to go all the way back. And now it's gonna go back down. Now this actually it may look pretty complicated. It's really not. I just have a redstone clock here that uh, pushes it forward um, the length of one thing at a time. And that continues until it gets turned off when it gets to the end here. And then when it gets to that point, the clock is then off, resulting in this clutch being off permanently. And then this clutch, which reverses the direction and pulls it all the way back, is turned on for the remainder. So as you can see, this is now on, it's going all the way back. And when it comes back, this little bottom thing then triggers that to go all the way back up. Now this bottom thing is to prevent gravel from falling down, which um, once this comes all the way back up, um, if there was things such as gravel in here, it would fall down without that bottom layer. And because it picks it up one layer at a time, a gravel would then fall back down and it would then just pick up the gravel, resulting in an infinite loop without actually mining anything. Oh yeah, by the way, did I mention that this thing's like infinitely expandable? <clears throat> On all sides. Like, this doesn't have to be the smallest sides. Although for each size, you have to add, add in one sticker, one redstone link, one drill, etc. It's kind of, it does get kind of expensive, but considering the fact that it's 
pretty much free fortune across a sizable area. It's pretty good. Although a few things I will point out. When we do start getting to the deep slate layer, it will no longer be filtering out deep slate. That is because it mines at a different time than cobblestone, meaning that I couldn't make one machine that does just deep slate or just stone. Although this sequence gear shift here, you can determine how deep it goes. So if you want to make it so that it goes down to just mining the stone area, it could be that. And then you could adjust the timings for these to match for deep slate and then put it down further. It's just that I haven't gotten down to deep slate yet to figure out the timing. And the timing for a deep slate is that these mine oh sorry 10 blocks forward on the piston thing and then it, it goes backwards because uh i originally was having these as mechanical pistons that's actually just a little bit of an unnecessary bit there but it is rotating at a speed of 128 rotations per minute and as you can see it's working quite effective now i am not going to be having a schematic for this just because there's lots of shenanigans here and you guys probably could design a better version of this yourselves but i am going to be tweaking this for a future thing where I probably will be releasing a schematic of it because one other issue of this is that it is entirely stationary. It doesn't move over like at all, though that probably could be fixed by turning this into a bunch of entities and then pushing it over like 15 blocks or so every time that it's done. But for the moment, we've got a pretty cool system going. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm probably going to be making a future re release of this when it is uh, got its kinks all fixed up and naturally improved. But I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and I will be seeing you guys around. Peace.